What's up guys, Retro Gamer Gen X here, and in today's video we're going to be talking about retrobriting. Basically the chemical processes of what causes these systems to turn yellow and the chemical processes of actual retrobriting and what you're doing to your plastics and your game systems and that type of thing. Uh, at the end I'll give my conclusion on how I feel about retrobriting and if I've done it and that type of thing as well. Uh, so we'll go ahead and talk about that at the end. But for right now, let's go ahead and talk about what causes these uh, game systems to turn yellow. So as we see here, I got my Super Nintendo, guys. And up here is what the original color of the system looked like when it was brand new. Kind of this, uh, almost like a gray color almost. As opposed to this yellowed, nasty plastic that we see here. Now, what causes this yellowing, guys, is basically the fire uh, retardant that's actually put into the plastic. Uh, there's a couple of different kinds. Uh, there's the ABS, that's the fire retardant. And then they have another one that is the bromine-based fire retardant as well. Uh, just so you guys know, Nintendo typically use the bromine-based one and not the ABS-based one. There's another rumor right there, or another... Uh, <laughs> another myth that's being busted that Nintendo used ABS plastics, which they didn't. They used bromine plastics. Um, just a different kind of fire retardant. But the chemical process that causes the yellowing is pretty much the same. And we're going to kind of talk about that. Um, a lot of people, they tend to think that UV light or sunlight causes this yellowing. Honestly, guys, that's another myth I'm going to bust. It's not UV light that causes the yellowing. What it is, is the AV or the ABS plastic or the ABS that's inside of here, as soon as it's manufactured, it starts reacting with oxygen, okay? The process that's happening is oxidation, okay? So what's happening is that the plastic that's this nice little bright color like this over... 10, 20, 30 years, it oxidizes. And what happens is the light that's actually reflected off the system, instead of being this bright, nice color, it turns into this yellowish color while the bright, you know, the bright parts of the light that's bouncing off, reflecting to your eyes to you where you can see, you know, <laughs> fifth grade science, guys, um, is actually this yellow color and it's being sucked in and not it's, you're not seeing this color like this anymore okay so that's what's basically happening it is oxygen that's causing this issue so like literally if we were to take these old game systems when they were brand new and stuff them into like a, a chamber full of co2 or say like nitrogen gas with no oxygen they would look perfectly brand new to this day okay um now a lot of people are going to tell me, oh, but the UV light, man, it's got to be the UV light because if I have my game system by a window and the part that's shaded doesn't turn as yellow as the part that hits the direct sunlight. Well, yeah, that's true because what does sunlight do? It produces heat, right? And what is a catalyst to oxidation? Heat, right? So the more heat you have, the more oxidation occurs. So if you have sunlight hitting a particular part on a system okay it's going to turn that part more yellow because it's getting more heat not because it has uv light uh, if you look at your windows either at your house your apartment on your car anywhere anything from like i think the 1970s and up it'll actually show on the window that it's uv protected so when the sun hits that window it filters the UV light out. So you're not getting ultraviolet light into your car or your house or any of that. It's actually being filtered out by your window. So there you go, another myth debunked. <laughs> so no, it's not UV light that causes this, guys. It's actually oxygen that causes this problem, okay? What I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna go ahead and put the chemical process up here, as you guys can see here. All right. All right, guys, so we have Acryl and nitrile, butadiene, and styrene. These are the chemicals that make up the ABS, the fire retardant that they're putting in these, um, these plastics, basically. Now, what ends up happening is that the oxygen molecules start end up attacking these molecules, this ABS. Uh, it starts with the butadiene. Uh, that's where it actually comes in and starts attacking the molecule. Okay. Now, 
intense heat or high light because lighting could make heat as we all know um, and that process starts this oxidation and what ends up happening is this oxygen molecule goes in to the butadiene part of the molecule here and what ends up happening is that the chemical that's formed is called hydroperoxide not hydrogen peroxide but hydroperoxide and basically once all that is formed in there it'll kick out an oxygen and hydrogen atom um, and those are called radicals at that point and what they do is they end up attacking the styrene molecule and once that happens it creates uh, something called muconic acid and essentially what ends up happening is it attacks the plastic and everything and this is what creates uh, that yellowing color uh, it actually changes the light spectrum that's bouncing off of the plastic and gives off that yellow color um, and basically the only way to correct that is either to paint over it which nobody should do that to their consoles <laughs> or computers uh, or you can do the retrobite so it's really up to what you guys want to do now this is the chemistry behind it now what ends up happening is the yellowing process that's going on is actually destroying the plastics in your console or your computer right now so what does retrobriting do let's find out now there's a whole bunch of different information I can give you about this but that's kind of the basics of the process now when you actually retrobrite your game console you are doing the same exact thing you're oxidizing it that's why you're using hydrogen peroxide some people add, add like oxy into it to give it more oxidation you're adding heat to it with either sunlight or with um, like lights that you put in like a, a over a, a bin or something that you got your parts floating in the hydrogen peroxide now mind you the hydrogen peroxide that you're using is not the same kind of stuff that you're going to get at the store okay <laughs> to you know put on your your son's scraped knee when he falls off a bike no this is the stuff that you're using to basically like bleach hair um for major chemical cleaning in like factories and things like that this is a major chemical guys this thing can cause chemical burns that's another thing that i want to let you guys know i see all these retro gamer youtubers out there they're like oh yeah i'm a retro bright this and they got these tubs of you know hydrogen peroxide in their house with all these lights on it and they add oxy into it and they leave it undetended i mean honestly you have an oxidizer with oxy in it with heat being on it what can happen <laughs> that's probably not a good idea guys i work with chemicals every day i'm a cpo a certified pool operator for a school district that's what i do i operate the pool so i deal with acids and a whole bunch of different chemicals all the time muriatic acid i deal with chlorine bromine soda ash i mean you you name it i deal with it and i can see what these chemicals can actually do okay and the pure hydrogen peroxide that you guys are using for retrobriting is a very dangerous product. So I just want to keep, you know, let you guys know and keep that in mind that this is not, you know, the hydrogen peroxide you're buying off the shelf at Walgreens to, you know, put on a scraped knee or something. Totally different kind of product, guys. Okay, so keep that in mind. You need to keep safety in effect. I would definitely retrobrite outside in a bin with sunlight and not in your house with lights over a bin and not being ventilated and all that kind of stuff that I see. Uh, because there's definitely chemicals and fumes that come off of that guys. You're adding heat to the equation. Oxidizers are not something to mess with. I'm telling you that right now. All right. So with retrobriting, like I said, you're basically doing the same process, but you're doing it in a stronger and faster way so what you're doing is you're basically oxidizing all that acid that's causing that that yellowing in the in the ABS or in the plastic you're actually getting rid of that okay so it's getting rid of the yellow color because you're getting rid of that acid okay now that with retro brighting you are actually damaging your plastics okay just like the oxidation that occurs 
to turn this yellow, when you're oxidizing it to turn it back to the bright color, you're doing it at a much faster pace and it's breaking down those molecular bonds inside of the plastic. That's what you're literally doing. You're breaking the molecules inside of the plastic and it becomes brittle and it becomes really able or willing to crack. I mean, you can barely, I've seen some retrograded consoles, like literally you barely touch them and they're like crack. And I'm like, wow, did that just happen? <laughs> you know, a block. So I have seen that kind of thing, guys. So when you're retrobriting, you're actually destroying your plastics even more than they're already destroyed. Now, they might look nice, but the actual structural integrity of the plastic itself is being reduced when you retrobrite. Okay? So I just want you guys to know that's what's happening. Okay? So I want to get to the conclusion here, guys, on how I feel uh, about retrobriting. Now, obviously, you guys probably already get a sense of how I feel about it, but this is how I look at it. Okay, you got an, uh, a, you know, an, a 1783 coin, okay, and you just found it. And you're like, oh, you find out that it's worth a million dollars or something, okay? And you're like, oh, man, I'm going to go ahead and clean this up before I take it to the newsomatic place to go ahead and cash it in. So you sit there and you polish it all up and make it look all beautiful and clean and shit. And then you take it to the newsomatic guy. And he's like, it ain't worth shit now. Why did you touch it? Exactly, guys. Exactly the same thing with these retro game systems, okay? There's a reason why I haven't retrobrided this or my Commodore 64 or other things that are yellowing because I do not want to destroy my game systems. This is not a permanent solution, guys. In five years, if you retrobrite, five, ten years, even less than that, I've seen systems <laughs> get yellow within a year of retrobriting. Um, but they will re-yellow. And when they re-yellow, they re-yellow way worse than before. I mean, they turn yellow, yellow at that point. And then what are you going to do? You're going to retrobrite it again and destroy the plastics even more, make them even more brittle. And it's just this ongoing process to pretty soon, either the plastic's going to turn into a mush or into dust. I mean, that's what's going to end up happening. Um, I mean, fortunately, there's no way to stop this process. If your plastic has those chemicals in it, it's going to happen. And to me, I see this, this here was made in 1991, okay? So this system is now 31 years old, guys. This is 31 years of yellowing. It's a patina. That's what it is. You hear all these guys on like these shows on the Discovery Channel and blah, 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 even like Pawn Stars or whatever. This to me is a patina. Now, if I go to a video game store and I see a Super Nintendo and it has, it's this color, like the original color, I know that that shit's been retrobrighted. Okay, there is no way that a Super Nintendo goes 30 some years being exposed to oxygen with these chemicals in it and still have it this color. Okay, it's not going to happen. And I've gone to a few <laughs> video game stores, especially I know this one where they had a PC engine and it looked beautiful. It was perfect. You know, it was nice and white. And I know by that time, PC engines were starting to turn yellow, okay? So I asked the guy, I'm like, hey, did you retrobrite it? Oh, yeah, he was so proud of it. Oh, yeah, I retrobrite it. It looks beautiful, doesn't it? And I'm like, yeah, I'll give you 60 bucks for it. He wanted 100 and some odd dollars for it. I told him I'll give him 60 bucks for it. And it, he went from the smile to this, well, like, what? And I'm like, yeah, dude, you ruined the plastic. I'm sorry, I'm not paying for a ruined system. And you might find some sucker out there that'll buy it because it looks pretty, but I know better. Those, that plastic's damaged. So, like, if my son gets pissed off and throws the game controller at the system, it's going to crack it. And then what? What am I going to do? And I have a cracked, nasty-ass looking... Well, it might look bright for right now, but in two years, it's going to look yellow again. <laughs> you know? So that's my opinion on retro brighting, guys. I know I'm probably going to catch a lot of heat about this because people, they love to have their systems looking brand new. But the thing you guys got to understand is that these systems are 20, 30, 40 years old now. Just like us, they get wrinkles, they get gray, like we get gray hair, they get yellow. You know, that's what happens with time, with age. And honestly, that's why I don't retrobrite. I, when retrobriting first came out, I think it was like 2007 or something is when I first heard about it. I did have a Super Nintendo and I tried retrobriting it. 
Um, I did that bottom half of the shell first, and it turned out beautiful. It looked perfect, you know. And this is before I knew what the chemical process was and what it was doing to the plastic, so that's why I did it. Um, then I did the top half of the shell, and it came out looking all marbled and fucked up, man. I, I, it just looked like shit. And from that point on, I didn't retrobrite. And then I started reading on the chemical processes and what happens and everything. And I've been trying to let retro gaming people know not to retrobrite, guys. It's horrible. It's horrible for the plastics. You're destroying the systems. Do not retrobrite. <laughs> now, it's up to you. It's your game system. It's your money. It's what you want. But I'm telling you now. If you retrobrite now, you'll be retrobriting in five years, and then retrobriting again in five years, and retrobriting again in five years, and eventually those plastics are going to break down to absolutely nothing, and you're going to have basically a motherboard sitting inside of a, a holy shell. <laughs> I don't know, you know, that's that's basically what I'm looking at, guys. But um, like I said, leave your comments and opinions down below. I know I'm going to catch some heat for this uh, because. It seems like everybody wants to retro bright nowadays, and I totally, I am totally against it, guys. I don't know if you are guy, if you guys are against it too. Let me know down in the comments. If you hate the fact that I'm against it, leave that down in the comments too. Go ahead and uh, leave your comments, kind of arguing the fact of why you think retro brighting is so great. You know, um, but anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and get out of here. You guys have a good one now. Peace out, y'all. Game over, man. It's game over.